like I'm back in 2016 because I am so excited for the new ABH palettes now. I feel like their color stories have been fun but still wearable and this one not as wearable but it's still a fun one. So I have the new ABH holiday palette, the fall is it holiday? The Fall Romance palette. And she is, like, if I could use one word to describe this palette, it would be, like, sexy. You know, this is a sexy palette. So this is the Fall Romance eyeshadow palette, a little for the third time. A provocative blend of decadent shades featuring 12 seductive, see? Seductive, jewel-toned, metallic, and rich neutrals. And I've been very excited for this one to come in. So when you order it, this is the box that it's going to come in. I purchased this from the ABH website where it is available right now. This kind of looks like dog hair, which kind of, you know, the texture looks like dog hair. I'm sorry, it does. <laughs> it has a 12 month shelf life and is made in the USA. And here's the ingredient list in case you need to take a look. The palette is $55. And then here's what the palette looks like. It is this like kind of felt material. Again, it, it looks it looks like dog hair to me, but <laughs> it feels very, very nice. Then of course you do get the mirror and then you get how ABH has been doing the size of their pans, which I love. And one thing that really excites me about this palette is I feel like this is truly, for those of you with deeper skin tones, oh my gosh, this palette is going to look amazing on you. You know, I'm on the light side, so this is pretty deep for me, but I'm still excited to see what kind of fall looks I can get. I'll be honest, even though as a makeup reviewer, I'm so excited for this launch, if I didn't do what I did and I was just a PE teacher still, so I would not have purchased this palette because she is just rich. But I think a lot of you are going to enjoy that aspect about this palette. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the colors, shall we? So this is what the textures are looking like. We're gonna go through all of that together. Uh, so we're gonna start off with the smoke metallic shade. Then we have moonlight, this light purple, fireside, and then divine. The shimmers are not feeling buttery soft to me, but that's okay. They don't have to. It's just something that I'm noticing. So smoke is a metallic silverish taupe with green gold reflex. Moonlight is a duochrome lavender with a sparkling opal shift. Not much of a base there, it's pretty sheer. Fireside is a metallic rosy copper with sparkling effects, that's very pretty. And Divine is a duochrome vivid purple with a sparkling pink purple shift. Honestly, other than smoke right here, a little bit weak, but let's, let's keep going. So we have crown, that one feels good, ember, leather, I like that name, leather for a light brown, and then thorns, oof, love these tones, you can absolutely get a wearable look with this though, we'll test that today. So crown is a duochrome gold with a sparkling green blue shift, but it's not crazy blue shift, we have Ember, which is a matte toasted brown with these gold reflex here. This palette is not swatching nice. Leather is a matte stone shade. And then Thorns is a matte hunter green with sparkling reflex. And then we have our final four shades. This midnight shade does feel quite buttery, but I feel like these do have a harder press than what I'm used to for ABH. So Crimson is a matte deep wine. Like, look at that. That's not a very good swatch. Midnight is a metallic smoky purple with sparkling reflex. Mulberry here is a matte reddish brown with sparkling reflex. And then Twilight is a matte deep grayish green. I'm not gonna lie, for a $55 palette, this is the worst I've seen in an ABH palette swatch. Normally they're buttery, they're smooth. These definitely have a harder press, which I think has to do with the deeper tones, which is fine, um, but yeah, very out of character for ABH. Normally I'm used to this 
from ABH. So let's get them on my eyes and we'll see. Okay, let's get into application. I use the Jaclyn Cosmetics First Base Eyeshadow Primer. We're gonna do like a brown green look. Now remember, for these videos, I'm really testing the shadows, not necessarily looks in particular, but we're going for leather right here, which swatched okay. I don't think this color should be an issue. So I'm just using a refer number 16 brush and we're gonna work this out in the crease. Yeah, I just feel like the swatches were uncharacteristically dry, but I, I don't let that dictate my thoughts because you know what the Viseart shadows are quite dry and they apply like butter so that's pretty good we're happy with that next we're gonna see what thorns can do you can see not a ton of kickback uh abh used to be notorious for a ton of kickback so i'm just placing this in the outer corner i think i'm gonna press it down a little bit more and we're going to blend it. And it's keeping the opacity on the lid and you can see that I used a green shade, which I liked. Okay, I mean, so far the performance is performing. So we're good. <laughs> I feel a little bit better now. And then we're going to see how Twilight does, which is that deepest shade. So it has a little bit more kickback. And I wanna make sure it's not too close to that first shade we used and it's not perfect. It definitely does add that extra bit of depth to it. So I'm just gonna blend that real quick. Good, so they are very different and this shade would be great to use as eyeliner. Then we're gonna test Fireside right here. Typically ABH shimmers apply better with a finger. This one is quite Thick with the glitters, if you know what I mean. It's just a thicker formula, not very finely milled. But it honestly is applying really, really nice with a brush. And then you can get even more opacity with a finger, I'm sure. And then let's see how this crown shade is. It's a duochrome and it's swatched with very minimal base pigment to it. But with a brush applying it in a more concentrated area, oh yeah. This is pretty on the eyelid. Very, very nice. I do want to go back into the colors that I used. We're gonna use some more of Thorns. I've decided I definitely want more of that green to peek through. So I'm going to build it up a little bit more in the outer corner. <gasps> this look is actually quite pretty. For zero thought and effort. And the shadows are applying fine. I would say they, they don't, Something's a little bit different with this formula that's not quite as good as normal, but it's still working fine. And then I'm going to use Twilight again, and I decided we're gonna use that as our eyeliner today. So it's not gonna be as visible out in the outer corner since I did blend some of that shade, but you can see with this angled brush, you're still very much able to see it out here, which is lovely. And this gives a really grungy effect. I feel like we do have a little bit of fallout, but nothing crazy. I even wanna take some more of Crown right here and run it higher because this is so pretty. We've seen shades like this before, but that doesn't mean I like using it any less. Okay, let me put on some concealer. Okay, I'm going to go in with some of Ember. I wanna see how these shimmers do in here. They should just fall off. You shouldn't really see too much of them on the eyelid, but I'm going to run this along the lower lash line. Don't worry, we'll bring some of the green back, but this actually is quite pigmented, and it has more depth than I anticipated, and this is without layering, so I'm pretty impressed with that. And the shimmers, as suspected, those little gold flakes in the actual component, you can't really see them anymore. It's just... It's just brown, but I do want to bring back the green element. So we're going into thorns right here. And I'm just going to run this a little bit tighter to the lash line. It goes pretty deep as well. This palette just has a lot of depth. And then we're going to finish with crown right here. This pretty green shade, which is going to transform 
the look, it's going to change color a little bit with the brown base being under it since there was no base on the upper part of the eyelid. And then I'm just going to clean up right here because I over blended a bit. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of the darkest shade in the palette other than crimson. I like how these two deep shades are different from just the traditional black, but they really do hold a lot of depth, but carry their own tone. And I'm going to do a little nickelowing like that. We're going to add a little bit of drama. This look is quite pretty. I'm not mad at it. So now we're going to test the more purpley, warmer kind of shades, see what's up with them. So I'm going to start off with Mulberry, which this is more of like a satin shade. I want to use it in a very minimal capacity. So I'm just going to keep it in the outer half of the crease, but you can see that is quite warm using a refer 16. I just cleaned the brush off because I don't want this to be too crazy but it's blending nice you know something is totally off with this formula but in their own good quality still blending great still holding their own there's a lot of versatility to the shades there's a lot of different things you can do with the shades quite impressed honestly but that's just almost going to be a little bit of a background color but it looks nice it's not patchy Blended easily. We love to see that. And then we're going into Crimson, this other dark shade. And I'm going to keep it right along the same side as Mulberry. And this definitely looks more red and pan, but it has more purple slash plum in there as it hits my eyelid against my undertone, I guess I should say. Undertones can kind of determine how a shadow turns out on your skin tone. And this for being such a deep shade, which can be intimidating, again, working out quite nicely. Okay, this divine shade should be interesting. I've seen it utilized in a lot of the different looks, especially on the ABH website. So I've seen people, it looks like even using it in the crease. So let's see how it does over the dark crease shades because if you put a matte dark shade down first, it will transform how this looks and wow, that's pigmented and there's no fallout. I'm gonna blend this all the way through and out. Whoa, this shade is really, really nice. Oh my gosh, it's very vivid and it's a shimmer but it's working out so well without being messy. Holy, okay. And this shade with the finish can be pretty all over the lid too. So I'm just blending out the shades on top. Now this shade had no base whatsoever. So let's see it on my eyelid. The swatch had no base, no pigment. It looked quite unimpressive. I mean, look at that. That looks like nothing. When it's concentrated on a brush, it makes a big difference. And my brush isn't wet or anything. And then for review purposes, I'm going to flip my brush over, hop into Divine. I'm going to fill the outer part of this eyelid, which looks different than on top of the matte shades. And then I'm going to go back into Moonlight, flip my brush over. I just want to see if this is a good layering shade. And it is. Nice. Love to see it. Ooh, I'm happy. I'm going to follow suit with the other eye. We're going to take crimson, and I'm going to do the exact same liner. Same liner, different color. So I'm starting off with this as the base. And then to make it even more fun and fancy, I'm going into midnight, which is this dark plummy purple. And I'm going to go right on top. Of crimson and you can even wet your brush you'll get a little bit less of a mess with this being a dark shimmer shade there's gonna be a ton of fallout it doesn't matter how high quality a shadow is this part will be messy if you use a dark shimmer but I went in with the matte shade first because I knew it would be less messy which means I can just layer less of the shimmery shade for a minimal fallout <gasps> How nice. Okay, I'm going to use a wipe and clean up underneath real quick. Now, to finish up this look, which is incredible, I'm going to take some of Divine, 
which I think is my favorite shade in the palette. This is so stunning and very high quality. Gonna blend it like so, and then I'm gonna go into some of Midnight, top off the brush, since it is more of a loosely packed, messy shade. And we're going to add a little bit of definition out here. Oh, that's beautiful. Clean off my brush, finishing off with Moonlight. I'd say, generally speaking, the application was there. Don't always judge a book by its bad swatches. <laughs> okay, once I get lashes and liner on, you'll see. Boom, and here are the final looks. So just kind of so you can get an idea. Here's what the purple look, then here's what like the greenish brown looks like on its own. I did just check online. So while this is currently available on the ABH website, it says they will launch at other ABH retailers like Ulta and Sephora on the 14th or after. So make sure you guys have my notification bell on and I will let you guys know once this palette becomes available. But overall, you know what? I was a little dubious there at first because the swatches, they weren't feeling like the classic ABH formula, you know, like something was off. They're drier, they're patchier, they're less pigmented, which kind of the classic thought of ABH's formula is extremely pigmented, extremely creamy with a lot of fallout. It's different. It's different in this palette. However, what's more important is the performance and the performance far outweighed the swatches. I typically do love that smoother, creamier formula, but if it if it works on the eyes, it works on the eyes, and I definitely feel that way when the swatches were weak on the arms. You know, they still were very beautiful on the eyelids. And I think this is an interesting mix of colors. I know I did two quite colorful looks, but I do think it's possible to get pretty neutral, wearable looks. I would say overall, medium to deep skin tones, especially my deeper skin tone friends, you're going to love this palette. My fellow friends here on the lighter spectrum expect to get quite dramatic looks with these. So I don't think that this color story is going to be for everybody, but I, I feel like this is such a great addition to the range. And ABH killed it with this curation as they have the last three palettes. I've just been amazed at what they've been able to pull off. Every shade has a purpose of being here. Every shade elevates the look that you add. They bring something different to the table and you can get a lot more different looks. Even though today I did just like very simple monochrome looks to test the formulas. I mean, you can combine the the greens and the purples, the warm tones to do some really interesting things. So I think that the longer this palette is out, the more creative we're going to see the look. So I'm excited about that. So overall, is this my favorite launch from ABH palette wise recently? Probably not. They've had other color stories that for me are just more wearable, something I'd reach more for, but I've got to give them credit for this one. It's just unique in the line. And I don't really think I have a color story quite like this. So if there are any similar palettes, let me do know down below. I do want to take a look, but I couldn't think of any that looked like this. <laughs> so make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel for more reviews, for updates. This will eventually end up in a palette review rankings. I do have one coming next week. Unfortunately, I already filmed it. Uh, I'm going on vacation, so I pre-filmed a lot. This did not make it in. So this one will be on the next one a couple months down the road. So anyways, that's just the updates for you. I will catch you guys in the next one. Okay, so have a good one.